Hello, I'm Natty MacDonald and welcome back to Dukescopy TV. It's the first day of the new trading week and time for the first Targets in Focus interview. Following a lacklustre performance by the Bank of England and the ECB last week, I'm joined on the phone now by James Kwok, Head of Currency Management at Amundi, to discuss his FX forecast for three major currency pairs, the Aussie dollar, US dollar, US dollar, Canadian dollar and the Euro pound sterling. But firstly, James, let's begin with a look at last week and market response here. Similarly, what events will traders be looking out for this week and what are we seeing in the markets in preparation? I think the most important event last week we've seen uh, was the uh, ECB meeting. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the market was very disappointed with, about what uh, Draghi uh, has said, but later the market seem, seems to uh, appreciate and euro dollar has rebound a lot. But I think the end game for the euro zone crisis would be the banking union or some sort of fiscal union, and so far uh, we have not yet seen it. So uh, any uh, temporary measure from ECB will just uh, buy more time and avoid the euro from falling much more. And our long-term prediction uh, for the euro dollar is uh, still around one to zero. This week will be quite quiet, a lot only because of Olympics uh, week, and also because we don't have a, a lot of uh, data coming. Looking at the Aussie dollar, US dollar, there's been a surge on Friday for this pair. However, it's now trading more flat ahead of tomorrow's Reserve Bank of Australia's rate decision. There has been some discussion that China may cut its banking reserve ratio requirement, which would strengthen the Aussie dollar. How does all of this factor into predictions for this pair? Well, I think um, Australian dollar is a very, has a very high correlation with the global equity market. Um, in the earlier of the year, it followed S&P and rose to uh, 108th level, but then it started to decline uh, more than one month ahead of the peak of S&P. So I think that 108th level uh, is very important because it represents a too overvalued level for the Australian dollar, uh, given the, the weak economic recovery around the world, uh, the weak commodity price, and also a uh, slowing economic uh, uh, in economy in Australia. Um, having said that, uh, Australia uh, can continue to benefit from a uh, safe haven flow, given its high uh, sovereign credit rating. Uh, we have already seen German and Russian central banks said that uh, recently they would add Aus Australian dollar into the, their reserve. So I think um, the Australian dollar now is trading around 105 level, and I think that its upside is well kept at 108. Uh, the peak in the first quarter, uh, so it should gradually drift downward to 105 in one month and then 103 in three months. Uh, in one year time, uh, the, the domestic economy should show more weakness, and so the RBA, the central bank, uh, is expected to cut rate further, and we expect the Australian dollar to go back to parity uh, uh, level. And regarding China, I think uh, China is, is is going to avoid a hard landing because they they are they are already showing a lot of uh, effort to 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 stimulate the economy. But uh, having said that, uh, just avoiding the hard landing means that this China may have a very soft landing, and soft landing in China doesn't go very well for Australian dollar because what people expect Australian dollar would do well is a very strong economic recovery in China. But so far, I think what the most, the best scenario for China will be a very soft landing. A rally in crude oil has pushed the US dollar Canadian dollar to trade above parity this week. This week's also looking quite busy for the Canadian economic calendar also. How does this impact your expectations for this pair? Um, Canadian dollar is also having a very high correlation with the global equity market, but very important is its geographic position, means that it has a very high linkage with the U.S. economy and also the U.S. monetary policy. While the Eurozone crisis is still the focus of the world, uh, the problem of the U.S. fiscal cliff will soon come to the front, and the risk of sharp economic slowdown in the U.S. will affect Canada because a big part of the exports uh, will go to the U.S., and a lot of foreign investment is also originate from the U.S. Um, so we expect um, the Canadian dollar uh, currently is trading around the parity level. Uh, its upside will be kept around 0.98.
uh, is the highest level in uh, April, and we we'll expect that to stay around the parity in one month, uh, 103 in three months. Uh, in one year time, uh, we expect the current account would deteriorate further because of the weaker exports to the U.S., uh, but stronger domestic demand for imports, and so the Canadian dollar ex expected to fall to 105 level. As we've mentioned, last week was a big week for the euro, and we saw the euro pound sterling bounce hard in what has been a downward trending market for this pair. The ECB disappointed traders on Thursday, and there's little to suggest that anything is going to change anytime soon. Is this reflected in your predictions for the euro pound sterling? Well, the euro sterling has made a very big movement uh, uh, over the past few months. It's dropped from 0 0.83 to 0 0.77 just a few weeks ago. Uh, I think this was completely because of the euro crisis. It didn't have any relationship with the UK economy. And in reality, the UK domestic economy is really doing very bad so far this year. Um, being the largest export market for the UK, I think... Uh, uh, it would be very difficult to see a sustainable recovery in the UK without a better shape of the Eurozone economy. So when I look at the Euro sterling cross, I would just focus uh, uh, on th thinking that the Euro sterling should be trading in, in, in a range. Uh, a range between 80 and 84 should be, should be normal. Um, because we don't think the real June crisis will find a definite solution in the coming 12 months, uh, so more chance we will see the real sterling trading in the lower range of the XT and XT4. So I would put a forecast of uh, real sterling at around zero XT in one month, in three months, and also in one year horizon. Thank you, James. I'll be back tomorrow with another exclusive interview on the Reserve Bank of Australia's rate decision. I'll be talking to Andrew Salter from Commonwealth Bank of Australia. For now, though, goodbye.